I'm building a 112 scale miniature model of a Sears kit house which would have been built around 1913. It wasn't common for houses built around that time to have kitchen covers like we see today. They'd often have a hoosier cabinet which was like a kitchen workstation with cupboards for flour, sugar and storage for pots and pans and dishes. I'm going to be building a hoosier style kitchen cabinet for my model using a scrap piece of 2x4. I trimmed the edge of the 2x4 using my bandsaw to make sure the piece of wood was two and square. There. I cut a piece off the 2x4 two and a quarter inches long. I'm using a 112 scale for my model house. This is equivalent to 27 inches if it were the real size. In my previous video I talked about the various model scale sizes and how to convert from life size to the model size and vice versa. It could help you out with your miniature models if you find these scales confusing to work with. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. You just need to click on it if you want to know a super simple way of doing these types of calculations. And I'll put a link to that video in the description for you as well. It can help you out with your miniature projects, no matter what scale you're using for your miniatures. So the length of my piece of wood is two and a quarter inches long, which is, as I said, equal to about 27 inches. In the previous video, I also showed you a hoosier cabinet and the height of the work surface was 30 inches and the height of my modern day kitchen cabinets is 36 inches or 3 feet. I purposely made this a little bit smaller. I'll be adding some legs on top to the cabinet which should bring it up to a total height of about 3 inches or approximately 3 feet in real life. If you've been following along, you'll know that this is going to be the kitchen pantry in my miniature 112 scale model house. I'll leave a link in the description to the video I did about kitchen pantries in these old houses. You'll notice that the block of wood has very rough edges. I'm not sure what type of wood it is, but it's quite heavy compared to a regular fir or hemlock 2x4 that I'm normally used to using. I think it might be cedar. I used my belt sander to sand the rough edges. The wood had quite a strong odor when I was sanding it. I was able to smooth out the rough edges of the 2x4. I'm going to be using some popsicle sticks or craft sticks on the trim of the block of wood which will form the body of the kitchen cabinet. The idea is to basically glue pieces of wood onto the block of wood like the trim, the countertop, the doors, the legs, etc. It's kind of like icing a cake. I'm going to attach all the little pieces of wood to the block of wood which form the body of the cabinet. The doors and drawers to the cupboard won't be functioning as I'm going to be using a solid piece of wood. The first step is to glue some popsicle sticks together. I need some of my popsicle sticks thicker than others so I'm gluing two together to give me double the thickness and I'll also need some popsicle sticks so they're just the regular thickness. I need to make all these popsicle sticks thinner in width and I need them all to be exactly the same width to make my project look good. Once I glued all my popsicle sticks together, I placed them on some parchment paper and let them dry overnight. I'm going to be showing you a trick so that you can make all your popsicle sticks thinner while keeping them all exactly the same and identical. I poured some glue on a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to be using a toothpick to apply some wood glue to the ends of the popsicle sticks. I carefully placed a small dab of glue at each end of the popsicle sticks. Then I proceeded to glue all my popsicle sticks together in one big block. Again, remember just use a little dab of glue on each end of the popsicle sticks. You don't need too much. Hey, if you are enjoying my video, please hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. As a new YouTuber, it really helps me out when people subscribe to my channel. Maybe even leave a comment and let me know how I'm doing. That'd be awesome. 
In addition to gluing the popsicle sticks that were glued together and doubled up, I also glued the single thick popsicle sticks to my block as well. I need to have some popsicle sticks that are twice as thick as the regular popsicle sticks. When I had all the popsicle sticks gently glued at each end and piled into one big block, I used my bar clamps to hold the stack of popsicle sticks together. I let the popsicle sticks dry overnight and returned the next day and removed the clamps. You'll notice here that the drawers on my modern day craftsman style cupboard have wooden trim around the drawer fronts. I'm going to try and replicate something similar to that in my miniature model. The, the width of my trim is two and a quarter inches. That's 2.25 inches. I multiply that by 12 because I'm using a 112 scale and this gives me an answer of 0.1875 inches. Using my caliper, I can see approximately how big 0.1875 inches is. You can see here approximately how much wood I need to remove from the popsicle sticks to make them the correct width. After letting the popsicle sticks dry overnight, I removed the clamps. I secured the popsicle sticks using a pair of ratcheting jaw pliers to act as a clamp. Carefully, I used my belt sander to reduce the width of these popsicle sticks to the proper width. Be really careful when doing this process. It's easy for your wood to get grabbed by the belt sander if you're not careful. And make sure your pliers don't rub against the sandpaper. You don't want your work to get snapped up and pulled under the guard on the sander. So be really careful if you try this and always follow the manufacturer's instructions when using power tools. Making miniatures can be quite tricky when you're using power tools. The safer alternative is to use sandpaper and manually sand the popsicle sticks down to the correct width. I used my calipers to see the width of my popsicle sticks. The width of my popsicle sticks is about 0.3 inches. In reality, that would be about three and a half inches. Well, this is thicker than what we would have seen in real life, but I think it's gonna be okay for my scale model. It gets really tricky to sand wood with a belt sander when it gets really thin like this. I took the glued bundle of popsicle sticks to my bandsaw and cut off the rounded edges. Remember, I only put a little dab of glue on each end of the popsicle sticks. Once I cut off the rounded edges that had the glue, I could easily take apart the bundle of popsicle sticks. The popsicle sticks came apart quite easily and they're all the exact same width. I have some that are the normal thickness and I have some where I glued two together to make them twice as thick. This will make my model look better by having all the pieces of wood the exact same width. This is way better than trying to cut the popsicle sticks individually using an X-Acto knife. I put some glue on the parchment paper again and used my toothpick to apply the glue. I applied the wooden strips to the body of the cabinet. I'm using the double thick popsicle sticks on the front because there'll be drawers and doors that need to be added later. This will add some depth to the model. I applied a piece of trim on the top and the bottom of the piece of two x four block. And then I added some smaller pieces vertically, which would be the dividers between the drawers and the doors. Here you can see a picture of my cabinet and a diagram of a Hoosier cabinet. Notice the wood trim on the end of the Hoosier cabinet. I'm doing something similar with my model. I let the model dry overnight and the following day I glued the legs on the cabinet using some wooden cubes I purchased at the dollar store. These cubes are approximately half an inch square. In real life, these legs would have been six inches in height, which is much higher than they would have been on the actual cabinet. But sometimes it's difficult to get pieces of wood exactly to the correct dimensions. I explained that in my previous video about miniature model scales. The link will be at the end of the video. Check it out if you want to learn more 
more about miniature model scales. So let's have a look at the cabinet in the kitchen pantry. Here you can see where the cabinet's going to be located in the kitchen pantry. I'm going to be putting a base plate along the bottom of the cabinet like this. I'll have some grooves in this base plate to make it look better, hopefully. You'll have to excuse my poor Photoshop skills. I'm going to be making a butcher block top for the cabinet, which will go on top of the cabinet like this. Because I've added the half inch legs and I'm going to be adding a butcher block countertop, it should bring the height of the work surface of the cabinet up to approximately 3 feet or 36 inches, which is roughly the real size of my modern day kitchen cabinet height that I showed you earlier. There will be two drawers on the right hand side and a cupboard with two doors on the left hand side. There will be a hutch on top of the Hoosier cabinet that will look something like this. So there you have it. The kitchen Hoosier cabinet is in the process of being built. And here's the link I told you about earlier, the one about understanding miniature model scales for your miniature models. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to follow the process of this miniature cabinet being built. We'll see you in the next video.